Golden Spiral Media presents The Blacklist Exposed. Private eyes are tracking you, broadcasting your every move. Welcome back to the award-winning The Blacklist Exposed podcast. Greetings one and all. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson, and I feel like this is where I should be dropping another Hall & Oates song. But I can't go for that. Ooh. No can do. <laughs> Thanks for joining us yet again for number 185, Andrew Kennison on The Blacklist. Written by Lucas Ryder and directed by Mahesh Palur. Show notes and other intel for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found on the Exposed. Dot com. Stay after the show, after the credits for the singing versions of those two songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's karaoke night here on the Blacklist Exposed. How are you, She's Aaron? She's a man, Hannah. She'll chew you up. Mm. Oh, this is great. That hair you. was kind of fabulous. I tried to grow that once and, and instead it just looked like I was, I should be in jail. <laughs> yeah. I was a master mullet. It was not good. Not, not a good look in the 80s. So it's been a while since Lucas has been up on on the docket. So missed him. Good, good show. Good, good episode. Show. I feel like uh, we're all right. We're hitting, we're hitting a groove. You know what I mean? Like the last couple episodes have been really good. Let's let's roll. Let's roll to the end. And then we're putting out hits on people at the same time. <laughs> True story. True story. Although this one, uh, I mean, I, I thought it was a very good episode. So I want to preface this, but I will say, really, you're kind of. You stu- you end where you were already at. Nowhere. Right. Nowhere. <laughs> you didn't really make much progress in terms of where we're going, but except I, to piss. You, right you say this like you're surprised. <laughs> I mean, this is the way it's been since season six. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, we're going to make. Nope. 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 We're not. Uh, and we can uh, talk about like. I'm how... glad the guy's okay, though. I'm glad the guy's okay. Kennison. Kennison. Not the PI. He's very bad. Yeah. For sure. Um, all right. Well, we got to finish up a little bit about last week where we asked all of you if Cooper would tell Red about Andrew Kennison and what were the results? 55% of you said no. No. You were wrong. And 45% of you said yes. Congratulations. You are correct. Good job. I figured this one was going to be more 50-50. Yeah, well, 55, 45. 45 percent were accurate though, because he did tell Red right away. Actually, he told him right before the task force. And yeah. you know what's funny is while they're laying it out in this episode, as he's telling more people, I'm like, wow. When when they really say it out loud, Cooper was an idiot. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, you you let this go really really far before you involved anybody you trust. I I, I don't understand at this point in the game. It seems. Wild, but I mean, he he did a, a good run. I think the the Lucas Ryder and the team did a good run of writing out where he could ex- explain his behavior. But on the same token, as he's saying it all out loud, and Pan Baker's looking at him, I'm like, huh, yeah, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> that's every time dumb. he opens his mouth, it's like, shut up, Cooper, shut up, Cooper. <laughs> You're just digging yourself <laughs> a bigger <laughs> hole in some government facility. Oh, uh, goodness. So, uh, Lori Perushner said, no, I don't think Cooper will ask Red for help just yet. Maybe later on in the season. I think they will drag it out some more. Just before the finale, he will ask Red. Red will find out. And boom, there's the cliffhanger into next season. Holy cow, Lori. That could have worked. But that honestly would feel right if they did that. So, Yeah, but this is we don't need a 22-episode story to bring it into next year. <laughs> We want closure on the story this year. <laughs> yeah, I need that one ended. I really do. Um, all right, question for next week. Who is your prime suspect behind Cooper's frame up? Who is your prime suspect behind Cooper's frame up? You can hit us up on social media at the Blacklist GSM or on our Facebook group, The Blacklist Exposed on Facebook. Now, are we saying Cooper's frame up and Red's tracker issue with Liz are the same problem now? Or are we still thinking they're two separate problems? I think... Th- it's pretty obvious to me they are connected. You? You think they're not still? No, I think after this this week and last week, they're definitely connected. They're solidified. Yeah, definitely. I would say lo- it's locked up. Walker's yeah. on at five. Definitely Kmart. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely Kmart. 
All right. Well, before someone sticks a private eye on us, let's go ahead and get into this week's case profile. You just want to sing that damn song. All right. So (laughs) if you've never listened before, we break down the the main portion of the episode and it's early again. So I am fumbling my words. I apologize. And then we uh, jump into characters, anything specific character developments. So this particular episode, you know, we start out in Boston, Mass. Red and Meech break into an apartment looking for Andrew Kennison. This is an entire Red's goal focused episode, which I should say that that's a good thing in your book, right? Because you, you feel like we've been missing some of this, right? Where it's just devoted to what Red's plight is. I think this is better because it puts Red out into the field, the action sequence. Like you see him probably being a little bit more badass Red. Mm. Like, you tell me what I want to know. You live. You tell me what I don't want to know. You die. <laughs> like the, the those types of Red moments have always been the, the highlights of the show over the years. Um, just seeing him come into the apartment. What I could tell you is this though. When they break into the apartment in the cold open and you see Weecha come in first instead of Dembe, it was a little off putting. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, wait, who's who's oh yeah, that's right, that's Weecha. <laughs> oh, because yeah, you're so used to Dembe. Dembe being going the one, in right? first. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little bit like, oh, I forgot about that. But yeah, I definitely think that Red being more abrasive in the field asking questions, waving his gun around, pointing it at people is definitely more of the fun red that we like to see on the show. Like, and, and, and I have to take away from last week, right? Last week was, you know, awesome to see that side of red too, the compassionate, the caring, the rocking the baby and all that fun stuff. But you know, badass red is definitely the red that people want to come back for each and every week. He's not taking questions from Marcus. Uh, Andrew is missing. Marcus is the roommate, by the way, which <laughs> the, the poor roommate, I mean, as soon as I saw him, I'm like, well, Andrew Kennison must be a kid. No, apparently he just went back to school, which is good for him. Hey, he's trying to get his life together. Good for him. Well, he went to the library and never came home. And apparently nobody seems very concerned about this. They're like, ah, I just went to the library and never came back. What is it? You don't call the police? I don't know. <laughs> Shouldn't there be an APB out for this poor guy? Ah, uh, his friends suck. Uh, so then uh, they we come the camp- to find. Because they call the campus police. Not like the real police. Yeah, right? you Just gotta call the, the real police. Yeah. Nothing against anybody that's ever been a campus cop, but you know you don't really have any authority. I, I literally I got stopped on a campus once by a campus cop, and I just left. <laughs> and he's like, you can't go. And I'm like, stop me. I was young have and like stupid. one or two people on the squad that are like actual police officers, but the majority of them are actually like the criminal justice majors. Yeah, they're just security guards. Yeah. Just fine. You need that. I'm just. I'm just saying. You don't really have any legal authority. And if you really know the law, which I was a criminal justice ma- major, uh, you can just leave. <laughs> <laughs> which I did. <laughs> What's that? All You're right. giving me a ticket for parking there. Sorry, <laughs> not gonna <Yeah>. pay it. <laughs> Good luck collecting. Hope you got a method for that. Well, we find out. Ooh, Cooper got there first. So. At this point, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so this guy's dead or this guy's being tortured or this guy was picked up by whoever is doing this, whoever was behind it. No, Cooper got there first because remember last week, Cooper got the tip from voice box to say, pick him up, get him out of, get him out of circulation. Right. Well, Cooper's got him. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, I think at that point we're thinking, okay, this is going to really come to a head. At the end of the yeah, end of the episode, I'm figuring this is going to be one of those cliffhanger moments, right? We're going to get the end of the episode, and you're going to get Red finds out that Cooper had him the whole time. No, no, it actually comes out a lot faster than that. So what we find out about the device, which is something we already kind of knew from pr- last week, it was designed. And this is the device that was found in Liz that supposedly led the person behind who orchestrated Van Dyke finding Liz because that person knew that Van Dyke wanted to kill Liz and red. So they put the tracker into Liz to uh, help Van Dyke find them. It's starting to sound correct? like there's like one of those, um, you know, this person to this person and my second cousin on my mother's side, then put Feels this like into it. the tracker and to get Liz's. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think at this point in the season, can we agree? It's a very convoluted idea. This whole concept. I mean, I get it. We're running with it and we'll enjoy it. But on the same token, this feels 
like a very <laughs> convoluted way to keep Liz involved in some way. You know what I mean? It, that's what it's starting to feel like. There was a like the show is about Red and Liz, so we need a story for Red to avenge Liz. What are we? What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And how do we tie Van Dyke into it? Because he was a shooter. So yeah, it doesn't feel like it was like a carryover from last year because I'm still trying to figure out when the hell did she ingest the thing. <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Which means I don't. To, to me, it's like the only logical explanation is that it was somebody in Townsend's organization was a plant for whatever this current organization is. Yeah. That was yeah. feeding intel into Townsend's organization, and that's how they well, got to Van Dyke so easily. On the same token, there were. I remember this uh, from the end of the last season. There were many people, I think we might have included, said it. I don't know if we said it or we were just mentioning what listeners said, because it was last year. I don't remember. Um, that how did Van Dyke even find them? So I remember having that conversation to some degree. So, I mean, it answers that. So you got that. Which is good, right? Because then you can say, like, here's how Van Dyke got there. So you can close up last season. But I think part of the challenge with the story this year so far is that you can't track backwards yet mm -hmm. yet right we're it, it could still be coming we're not we're not saying that it's not coming but right now trying to like piece it all together is a little bit challenging right. for me in my head i got you unless it was well, in the ice unless it was in the ice cream it's the only thing i can think of mm. you know what i would eat ice cream even if i knew there was a tracker in it is that sad i was thinking you maybe i would give up ice mm, cream can't take the fat boy out of out of me nope nope that's why we bike and run that's right. That's literally the only reason I run, so I can eat ice cream. And I'm not exaggerating. That is the truth. I do not want to be sexy. I just want to eat ice cream. It was designed to monitor a person's location and their status on medication intake. It's actually kind of a cool concept. I don't know how it would actually work in, in the real world, but I like the idea, and it feels very blacklist. As a and kid Cooper's who's supposed to take their ADHD meds in the afternoon, like I would totally give this to my child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had I had ADHD meds when I was a kid, so it's... You don't want to take them, right? You don't want to take them because it makes you feel different. It makes you feel, uh, and difference never a good thing to you as a kid. You know, you appreciate it more as you get older, but as a kid, you don't you don't like it. So that's why a lot of kids wouldn't take it. So that's if you that's why your to kid doesn't your want to do it in the first place because <laughs> you have ADHD. Sometimes, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it it's a real thing. You know, it's a real problem when they're properly diagnosed. Let me just go on a little tangent about how ADHD is actually overdiagnosed in this world today. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Okay. So anyway, anywho, Cooper's realizing that things are coming together once he realizes it was designed by the same man he picked up. So he's sitting there as they're getting briefed on who they're looking for. So basically this is where the cases are converging. Like he didn't have any idea that what, who red was looking for and who Cooper was looking for was the same guy. Now he knows. And he still doesn't say anything. I don't think Mahesh did a really good job on the sequence here. Like you can actually just see Cooper starting to panic, sweat, you know, kind of like noises are getting a little bit muffled in his brain. So I thought the way that they directed that was actually really great. Cutting back and forth between Cooper and then as Red's talking, giving the info. There were several really well shot sc scenes. I'll talk about one when we get there. But the argument between the team where they're actually, you know, wanting to trap Cooper and Aram just won't have it. Thank God. I mean, well, I mean, we'll get there when we get there. But that was that was my favorite scene of the episode. I love that because I'm like, really good. yeah, really good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so you know, once he realizes it was designed by the same man he picked up, he kind of sweats it out. But we find out a little bit more about what the situation was. Kennison's wife, over multiple days, didn't take her antipsychotics and ended up killing her sister and her mother. After I just want to point out that's an extreme psychotic break. Okay, so Kennison designed this to prevent this from happening to anyone else ever again, because obviously, you know, he lost his wife, who also lost her sister and her mother. Um, someone orchestrated Keen's death. We know that. Knew that Van Dyke would kill her without exposing themselves. The team now knows that Cooper has Kennison in protective custody, and they're kind of turning on him. And that's where Aram kind of has his, his fight. So... Let's talk about that. That's my favorite scene in the whole episode, right? A lot of cool stuff in this episode, but the, I love that. I love seeing Amir slash Aram really get a, a chance to choose some scenery. So this could be in the character moments, but I'm going to bring it up here now because that's where it fits in the episode. Are you glad they did that? Because we could have done the whole, let's try and trap them. And then at the very end, they realize they should have had the talk. We're finally, I feel like, yes, 
that's the conversation that somebody that has worked with this man for almost 10 years would need to have if he really if you really want us to believe that they're on the same team yeah and i think that we're having these really good team moments where it's the four of them over Mm -hmm. the last couple of episodes so to have this back and forth like and i love that you know Ram is channeling his inner Sam Kennison. Right? Just say it. Say it. Cooper's a bad guy. Just say it out loud. <laughs> He's so pissed off that they would even come to the realization that that's the case and that there has to be a better explanation for it. Um, but that it, it's interesting that Aram is the only one that feels that way. Right. The other three are just like facts are the facts. We're going to go on the facts. And then later in the episode, then wrestlers, the one that's like, well, red gets a break. What doesn't Cooper get a break? It's almost like weird that Resser is willing to turn Cooper in, but then ask Cooper to have a pardon to Panabaker, where Aram's at least keeping his character in line because he's the one that's always the emotional, the the friendly, the person that cares. And mm-hmm. you really see that come out as they're having that debate inside of the office. Well, and while they're having the debate, I'm th- a thousand percent on his side, and I don't understand why nobody else is at that point. I'm just like, why are none of you... Just saying, you're right. Why, why didn't we do, do that from the start? Let's just go talk to Cooper. He's earned the benefit of the doubt. He put the task force together. He's been there for us. All that other jive. I'm like, thank God at least one of you said it. The rest of you are turncoats. But I mean, at the same time, you have to think about it as an FBI agent. He would be the prime suspect in this case. Sure. Therefore, you have to go through the normal procedures. You know, you arrest him, you question him, you talk to him. You could do the things that Aram is saying, but if they do that all before they arrest him, then they can't use it if he is indeed guilty in any kind of trial or prosecution steps. I'm just, well, number one, the show doesn't really abide by the law that often. <laughs> it's true. So, it's true. <laughs> the idea that literally almost everyone is detained without an attorney is insane. I mean, yes, there there definitely are, you know, black sites and all that stuff, but we still have civil rights if you're a citizen. Um, so it's it's sometimes it's a little wild. And in fact, this episode, when a lawyer came and said, ah, you can't talk to my client. I'm like, we're doing lawyers now. That's cool. That's new. Uh, so that was uh, that was fun. But yeah, no, I am. <laughs> if that guy legal was, sta- if that guy legal was a lawyer. Statute, legal statutes aside, I wish he was. He was. I'm really bummed he got killed off, man. He was a cool character. I agree. He was cool. A cool actor. He really, really delivered. But anyway, I love I love Aram just taking them to task and he's putting his foot in the sand and saying, no, we're absolutely not doing this. I am talking to Cooper. That's it. We're done. And he stuck to it. Nobody talked him out of it. We didn't have any uh, TV tropes there. It really, really worked well for everybody, I think. So moving on, you find out from Red that uh, when he's having this little conver- conversation, I'm a criminal and a fugitive and the most important person in the world to me is dead because of you. Andrew Kinnison, uh, someone wanted you hidden, so I couldn't find you. This is when they're on the plane. They're taking a little road trip on the plane. But we find out that he gave that to a cop. He thought it was a police officer, an NYPD detective named Reginald Cole. And I don't know if, if he was named after him or not, but there was a Reginald Cole football player that sadly passed away at 22. So I'm just mentioning that in case it was a nod. Sad story. Look it up. Um, well, Reginald Cole is a shady former cop who's now a P.I., and he just, everything about him reeks P.I. He's got alcohol on the desk. He's got to take a swig before he leaves. I mean, Safe just, in the wall. Oh, yeah. the door. <laughs> it's like just one step away from Mickey Splane. So he's also, unfortunately, he's kind of dirty. He's dirty. And he's constantly doing shady things like this, obviously for money. So when we meet him, he actually has a congressman, in his, congresswoman in his office who hired him to find out dirt on her opponent. And he instead finds dirt on her and uses it to blackmail her. So we get a nice indication that we don't care what happens to him. Right. Which is fine. You know, that, that makes it easier at the end. <laughs> like, ah, well, that sucks. Bye, guy. Um, uh, they bring him in. They, they finally track him down. Well, actually, Red arrives first. We- Weecha and Red, they're there first. His team are there first. And Reginald makes a break for it. And after, Red's team after Reginald was tipped off. Yes. After that's right. Good point. After he got a phone call, he was tipped off that they were coming. Right. Which means someone had to know. And I, I think this is important to point out. There's only a couple people that weren't 
task force members that knew. And I just want to reiterate, he made a call to Marvin Gerard right before that happened. Right before that happened. Now, it could be subterfuge. Could be a red herring. Could be that they're making sure that it matches when you find out it was Marvin Gerard later. Or, mm-hmm. counterpoint, or, would be mm-hmm. that Aram called the New York City detectives to get a match on the voice, and it's still somebody inside of the New York City Detective Bureau that tipped him off. An old friend, potentially. Like Lou. Could be Lou. Yeah, Lou could have worked up there at some point. And I only say that because they mentioned Lou by name like 18 times in this episode. They (laughs) never mentioned him by name. Like every episode, I'm like, what's his name again? I swear to God, Troy and I have had this conversation. What's his buddy's name again? Because they never mention it. This episode, Lou. Hey, Lou. And my buddy Lou. And Lou. So I'm thinking Lou's definitely involved. (laughs) And Marvin Gerard is a prime suspect, in my opinion. Which what sadly you? is a TV trope. <laughs> it is. What what say you though? Are you on board? We had the Gerard idea before though, so it's not new. Yeah, Gerard has come up a few times in the in the fan community, especially when you get to the end of the episode when LaCroix and Reginald walk out of the black site. The only people that knew that they was in the black site had to be Marvin Gerard. Mm-hmm. Because you wouldn't have think that the New York City police officer detective corps would be able to like one get to DC in time, and two find um, the site. Nobody would knew that they was actually captured. Mm-hmm. Unless he had a tracker inside of him, also, <laughs> which could be possible as well because we don't know. But the Does only the tracker also have a microphone because he would have had to re- hear the conversation if that were the case. Like inner space, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> little person like flying Den- around inside of you. Dennis Quaid is running around inside of this guy. So yeah, I mean the because of the hit at the end of the episode, you, Marvin Gerard becomes like suspect number one. Yep, I would agree. Don't know the motives yet, but I mean he has. I mean his life has been hell dealing with Red, so I can see it. All right, he's getting well, him back. He's getting back at him for Brimley beating the crap out of him with his llama. It could be he he doubted him, and you know he he had to put something together. But I I don't know that'd be a stretch for him to get Liz killed though so it is you know it could just be a big bad and this is just a red herring I mean it would be a good red herring to yeah. make us think it's Marvin Gerard and him get tortured again <laughs> poor poor guy uh, so we'll see I mean I, I'm not I don't 100% have an honest solidified answer to who it is yet I do think Lou is involved because of the only well I mean I've kind of always thought Lou was involved as soon as he got I'm like where's this guy come from but the fact that they keep mentioning his name this episode, I'm like, ah, oh, they want us to remember who Lou is. Right. It's important. Or they're just trying to help you out. Could be. Could, maybe they listen to the podcast and like, this idiot can never remember this guy's name. So we're going to say it six six times in this episode. Make sure Aaron's <laughs> dumbass will remember it. It's very, very possible. All right. Well, they bring him in. And before he can talk, and they're going to make him talk, his lawyer arrives. Slick dude named Tyson LaCroix. Ooh, man. he is cool. I like this guy. He's got the law down. He's dropping everything. He knows about Liz Keen and that she ingested and Van Dyke and Cole gets released by his lawyer. But they're gunned down in the street by a motorcycle rider right in front of Red. And I can't understand for the life of me how nobody saw this coming when that guy's coming down the street. Pure leather. I mean, he looks like something out of a, you know. Like a porn movie or Mission Impossible. Yeah, or yeah. really does. Looks exactly like that. And I'm just like, man, I see a guy all in leather. A guy or woman. I don't know. A person in all leather with a helmet on. And they're coming down the street when my main target is right there in front of me. Yeah, I'm hitting him with the car on principle. Yeah. I've seen enough movies. Gun it. Block. Motorcycle exactly. runs into the side of the car. And you would, and then you would have known who sent him, and then you would have had a much better idea of who. Well, what's all going down? What the hell, man? What the hell? So, what did you think overall? I mean, that is actually the majority of the episode, right there. I am there. I mean, so pissed what? on a number of reasons. <laughs> One, hang on, you got you got super hot. I'm just telling you, so <clears throat> so you don't try to edit later, and you go, Vroom. <clears throat> yeah, I'm. I'm really frustrated on a few different um, angles on this one because one, Tyson LaCroix, mm-hmm. man, 
the suit. Uh-huh. Just well dressed, snappy, witty. Like this, like I was getting Solomon vibes. I was like, yes, keep this guy around. We yeah. definitely need to keep this guy around. I love when you get an actor that really just instantly gels, I think. And, you know, a lot of times they're even, even at the part is, this is not a flashy part. I mean, it's a lawyer. We've seen it done a hundred times. I just like the way he presented it. You know, he really delivered. So it's a bummer. He got shot. And then two, because he got shot. I'm really frustrated because he was like, Van Dyke keen. <laughs> like, how the hell do you know all this stuff? Mm-hmm. Who do you work for? And I started to get the sense and feeling like maybe before he said he was a lawyer that he might have been part of the FBI. So maybe the government was investigating the task force itself because mm. maybe they didn't actually know what was going on. So I thought that was probably an interesting angle. And then, um, yeah, the fact that we're literally nowhere further. We're so excited. We're like this week, Andrew Kennis said, yes, we're finally going to get some momentum and drive the show forward and then blam blam and we did here we are we did get some momentum square. we got some we we definitely got some what we also got was uh kind of you know brought the story together bridged it so we did we do have some of that so now we know everybody knows where everybody else stands uh, except for reginald cold because he doesn't stand anymore because <laughs> he's dead <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into gonna, some specific characters. Yeah, no, I can't do it. <laughs> I was gonna, you no, I was gonna say Lacroix was sitting down on the job, but <laughs> oh, ouch! He went more like slumped. He slumped down on the job. And I keep. Suit, I was. I kept hoping his eyes were dirty because it was laying on the ground. Come on, you really like the suit a lot. I love the suit. The suit. I like. I if I could pull that off, I would totally pull that off. Nice light gray pinstripe purple Dress shirt for success. Pur- purple right. pink shirt underneath. Yeah. Dress for the man you want to be, not the man you are. That's right. That's why I wear sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, did have some music in this episode, and we start the episode with Red cruising the campus apartments of MIT as we hear Andrew's roommate jam into Too Simple by Relay. Then towards the end of the episode, we hear Mercy Street by Elbow. And you can hear both those songs plus others over on the playlist on Apple and on Spotify. You can get links to those over on the website at theblacklistexposed.com. And both songs were, were pretty cool. I felt hip this yeah, week. Yeah, for sure. I Stuff think the Mercy Street know. one fit really well. Yeah, it did. It was, a, it was a nice ending. All right. Now, when we're going on to characters, you know, this week, I will say we didn't have a ton of real character moments, but we'll break them down. Cooper. Um, you know, we get a little bit more detail. He breaks it down to 1200 NYPD officers, but we get to Reginald Cole. Um, Lou Sloan is mentioned by a bunch by name. So by the TV code of conduct, he's in on it. I already said that. I'm saying it again. Has to admit to Custer's death to the team and all the details of this insane frame up. But he does say that his biggest regret, his greatest regret is having Charlene lie for him. What? That's your biggest regret? Like, of all this stuff, that's your, that's your big. I asked her to lie for me. Um, I'm just letting you know, in case you didn't know, Cooper, she's perfectly fine with lying. Say what? Lying horizontally. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Enough Did of that one. say she was a costard? <laughs> oh, stop way your head. That's always the rule of a joke, man. Stop way your head. No, it's supposed to be yes and. Yes and. Uh, that's funny. All right. So Cooper, you know, he he's had to come clean. Everybody knows about the situation. And that leads us to wrestler having to take Cooper under arrest, which which he at first disputes but he eventually does that's all that russell really does this month park doesn't or this week park, park doesn't do anything that kind of leads us to the big plot twist right so he after he tells the task force and red apparently cooper is just on a confession run right i don't know why he brought panda baker in this early but he did and you know he's trying to to be a good man he realized he's gone too far so panda baker comes in and explains that, you know, there's a lot of things that this task force can do and we can get out of that. He should have come to her, which he should have. 
before you did all this stuff, before Lou fixed the ballistics and everything else. But you went way too far. And, you know, there's even a comment, hell, we we let Dembe join the task force, which I thought was, ah, good. Mention that as much as you can, because I need to hear it more. <laughs> really do, because it still doesn't make any damn sense. But, you know, she she's basically illustrating that you are the assistant director of the FBI. You are the guy in charge of the task force. You're the, you're the one that has to stay clean. Yeah. Above reproach. Because above. Yep. Exactly. And you have jeopardized this entire task force by, by your actions. And she can't let this one slide. So he's going to be indicted, but, but Panda Baker took it to mountain high, including the president. She took this to the president because she's a Senator. I remember that. Um, and she has bad news. They do want to indict him. But if he if he breaks some big cases that show the conspiracy, he might get a break. And what a coincidence. We got like six or seven episodes left. <laughs> Sounds like six or seven possible suspects. It's about how long Red was in jail. <laughs> so so what do you think at this point? Do you really see any chance that Cooper actually goes to jail? Oh, no, because we already know season 10 is coming. Maybe he'll be in prison for a while. We did that already. No. No. New stuff. New stuff. Yep. Wrap it up. I'll take it. And then move on. <laughs> move on. <laughs> move on next week. Or next season. Move on next season. But I did like, I, like we said last week, I like when Panna Baker's here. She's a fun character. She plays the role well. It's it's good when she's here. I think she really adds a lot to the to the ep. To 120%. The to the show. I am really stumbling over words this week. Um, yeah, you're just, 100%. You're just, you're, just in, you're just in awe of Panna Baker's additions to the to the blacklist. That, she ele- she elevates it every time she's on. I mean, I'm serious. She elevates I really love her dynamic with everybody. And, you know, when she's fired up and she's pissed off about something, it's even more fun. And she has an edge to her that I think really, really plays well with the, within the construct of the show. We should get her on. We'll have to figure out how to get in touch with Reach out to her. Story. You got yeah. this. Let's do it. Bring her Let's on. Do it. Love to have her on. I know the audience would too. They love her. All right. Well, that leads us to Aram. Um, he has never been to a rodeo. We learned that. It's not my first rodeo, but I've never actually been to a rodeo. So when I go to a rodeo, that'll be the first time. I like it was that. A great, yeah. It was a great quip. It's a yeah. st- standard Aram line that actually, this one is actually pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But uh, he's able to break this voice modification down, you know. Like he only he can, but he gets it down to six possible voices and that's what they send. And that's how they come back with Reginald Cole and whatnot. I can appreciate this though, because there's a lot you can do. I mean, obviously listen to Aaron and his robotic voice a few weeks ago. Uh, Mm. There's a lot you can do to manipulate stuff to make it sound halfway decent. Um, And the thing I like about this one is the fact that it wasn't like, Oh, I just, you know, reverse this and did this and boom, here's the answer. The fact that he said that they had six options tells you that, hey, this process isn't perfect, right? Because mm-hmm. most, you know, cop type shows, CSI, whatever, would just be like, oh, and I reversed it and here it is. And it's like, come on. Like, it's not that easy. It's like, zoom in, zoom in, enhance. <laughs> God. Uh, that one's actually getting closer to where that can be more p- possible. You know, that whole zoom in and enhance thing um, where they have algorithms that can replace lost cells i mean it's not like they do it on tv where you have a fuzzy shot from a best buy camera and you zoom in and like oh enhance his face oh that's him that's bob from the supermarket you know it's never that crystal but they do have algorithms that can kind of add to kind it of get there. yeah it's not like tv <laughs> tv is fascinating with some of the tools they they come up with when they need them but when they you know when it's not pivotal to the plot suddenly those tools don't help which is always funny to me. NCIS is the worst for that for that kind of crap. Um, not that I watch NCIS. Please don't. I'm um, don't shame me. <laughs> How would you know, Aaron? Shh. Next week on the blacklist, we go from karaoke night to therapy. I've seen a couple of the ones with LL Cool J because I like his music. Marvin Gerard. Uh, we talked about him already, but Red wants him to defend. He, he he wanted him to be a lawyer, right? Like he wants yeah. him to get in there and, and take care of Cooper and or Kennison. Which one does she want? I'm trying uh, to remember. Cooper, because Cooper was yeah, in holding Cooper. at the time. Yeah, he wanted him to uh, to get in there and help Cooper. And that's when we 
can say that he possibly becomes a suspect there. But people have talked about him. We've talked about him. Fans have talked about him as a possible suspect all season or since this all started. Yeah, because it, it was that whole conversation in the camper. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the task force was in shambles and Dembe was doing his best and you left us in a lurch and all this other stuff. And so, yeah, Gerard has motive for sure. I think there's lots of motive. I mean, he was tortured by Red and I don't know, maybe, maybe Gerard thought Liz was his weakness. Yeah. Take out so Liz and he focuses back Liz. on the criminal empire. Mm-hmm. They're possible motive. Although also one of the biggest motives, because you know exactly how he felt about Liz. Therefore, I wouldn't want to do that because I'd be dead. <laughs> well, that's why you orchestrate this whole thing and you call in Ghostface and, you know, get some other people involved. I mean, Gerard could be Ghostface himself. Could be. Could be. Weecha doesn't do a whole lot except look The call's going from inside the house. <laughs> God. <sighs> now I got to go watch that movie. When a stranger calls. Yeah. First, tw- you ever see When a Stranger Calls? Have you ever seen it? A while ago. Because that's where that comes from. That's actually, yeah. that's where that comes from, is from the movie When a Stranger Calls. If you've never seen that, listeners, go find When a Stranger Calls. It's from late 70s, early 80s. You don't need to watch the whole movie. First 20 minutes. That's the first 20 minutes. It is one of the most terrifying scenes in film history. Just, oh my God, it'll make you cry and check every closet. All right, moving on. Red. Uh, well, I, I mentioned Weecha. Weecha looks stoically as dangerous as she always does. Okay. Um, moving as long on to Red. Say, as long as we don't say Weecha's looking very Dembe-like. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Dembe's still got his mojo, and Weecha's kind of coming into her own. I really, I really like that character, and maybe she's involved, you know, because we didn't know her before the season, so we'll find That's out. That's right. That's true. Um, Mears is behind it all from afar. Nah. That would be kind of clumsy. That's why she left. Think. Duped him, yeah. got him, got him to love her, got all the intel, and then went and orchestrated the whole thing. That, that would be a stretch. Do you think Cooper should have went to Red? Like a, like or, or a right while right. ago, you mean? Or like in this episode? Well, in, in this episode, Red goes to him and says, like, you never thought that maybe this is linked to me. You know, because Red, everything's about him. But it, in this case, it actually makes sense. You didn't think that you being in charge of the task force might have something to do with this. And I think we talked about this forever ago when the cover up was, was first happening. When, how do you not think this is not connected? Why didn't you go to Red? Because you know it's probably connected. I remember that we had that conversation. Yeah. Why don't you go to Red at least to help you out? Because obviously you guys are buds now and having coffee in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you have visitation rights at this point. Exactly. So, so what, what do you think about that i know we talked about it when it first happened that he should have just went to red because you know it's probably connected so do you still feel that way this late in the game i mean i think initially when the blackmailing was happening he definitely should have gone to red i think in this particular episode tonight having the conversation with him when he did i don't know i think he should have said something immediately obviously it doesn't work for the episode but I mean, the minute he was like sweating and like, oh my gosh, it's all connected. Like he should have said something like, hey, I know where Kennison is. He's in the room down the hall. (laughs) Fair point. Exactly. I I still couldn't believe he didn't say anything when he got like, ah, it's Andrew Kennison. Wait, Uh, that's a guy I got in holding. Oh, snap. He was, uh, to be fair, Cooper was a little bit distracted. You know, he was so worried that Charlene was involved that he wasn't thinking straight. Okay. It's nice that you give them that's the benefit of the doubt. That's your biggest regret. Is that Charlotte? Your cheaty wife is your <clears> biggest <throat> regret. Cooper is such a Boy Scout sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I get it. Forgiven, moved on, everything else. But I got to tell you, nah, 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 nah. I really like, you owe me this one. That's what I'd be throwing out. I would totally play the guilt card. Like, hey, I need you to, to lie for me. I will not do it. Oh, oh, that's the one thing you won't do? Fine. And then I throw out something about laying horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a very toxic marriage. <laughs> Make it as uncomfortable as possible. All right. Well, Red, uh, he he has a uh, nice little kind of monologue where he talks about he has a sense of inev- inevitability, uh, concern. Hey, you got that, that right. He, Good job. Yeah. Oof. You know, 16 times the charm. Concern that he won't be able to contain himself. And that he still hasn't seen the worst of himself. 
well, I'm hoping to see whatever that is. Because we keep hearing about this. You know, he's afraid of how dark he'll go. He'll afraid of, you know, what he'll do. He hasn't seen the worst of himself. I want to see that side before the season's over. I want to see in the finale him do something so outrageously wrong. I never would have seen that coming. Because yeah, I, I, I mean, feel like I feel like you're continuing the show. You're going past where the show probably should have ended. Okay, fine. Take and you keep bringing this up. It's come up at least ten different times throughout the season where he's mentioning how dark he's afraid of of going. And you know that that's why um, uh, mirrors to the left and everything else. I want to see it. And he's done a lot of dark stuff, so you have to go pretty dark to meet all the buildup. But I want to see it. I want to see Red go there. And you saw him struggling with that when he comes in and finds Kennison at the safe house and puts the gun like literally right into his forehead. And we just like, remember why we're here. Remember why we're here. He has to just literally talk him off the ledge because he was just going to pull the trigger and kill him right there. Yeah, but I want to see something darker than that. You keep building this up about how dark you just shooting the guy that did it isn't really that dark. I mean, Red's done this a thousand times. So that's not your master criminal. Okay, comes with the job. It's literally the job description. Other duties that is assigned. So I want, to, I want to see some really dark, evil stuff. I want to see some Teddy stuff. I want to see Red show up with an alpaca and do some freaky shit <laughs> stuff. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I want. Anything else in this episode before we move Strap on? Strap him up to a fence like an axe throwing thing, but instead he throws uh, razor sharp uh, hats at his, at, at, at his body. It's a Bond movie all of a sudden? Why not? It feels like a Bond movie. No, you strap him up and then you get lawn darts and throw lawn darts at him. But they don't have the sharp tips anymore. They've changed that over the years. He's rad. He can get the old ones. Anything else in this episode before we move on? No, I mean, I just, it, I think the only thing that's frustrating is the fact that we're literally nowhere further along. Same yeah, problem, ep- same questions. I thought this was <laughs> really going to set really up really something fun. for the next six episodes. That was really surprising to me um, that we went this, <laughs> we went an entire episode and we're right back where we started. <laughs> like... And it was still good, though. I mean, I still enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, it, the, yeah, the yeah, quality hour television it. for sure. Yeah, it was engaging. All right, well, I want to take a quick second to say thank you to those of you that are supporting the show by going to Patreon. That's P A T R E O N, patreon.com slash the Blacklist GSM. Special big thanks to our honorary black- Blacklister Patricia. Also, special shout out to our task force members, Marilyn, Cindy, James, Jens, Joanne, Johnny, Justin, Karen, Catherine, Sharon, Vanessa, and Lacey Ann, all official task force members. All these people receive cool gifts from us, and you can get a cool gift as well for donating at the $20 level and higher. You don't just have to do it for a long time. You can just do it for a few months, and you get a cool t-shirt or a coffee mug. So please do it. You got to do it. Come on, join in. And $5 patrons obviously get the podcast before anybody else. So yes. if you want to be on the know, on the know, in the know, whichever, both of those cost you five bucks over in the hat at P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the blacklist GSM. Fill the fedora, click the dollar sign in your podcast app. Thanks so much for supporting the show because we'll hear from all of you in Special Agent Intel coming up next, right after this. <laughs> Are you sick of the endless, poorly realized remakes as we are? Then take a listen to Remake This Movie Right, where we take a classic movie, figure out what works and what doesn't, throw a dash of humor at it, and then we craft our own remake. So by the end of every episode, we will remake this movie right. Recently featured as a podcast to listen to by the AV Club, you can find us at RemakeThisMovieRight.com or your podcast app of choice. Every movie you love will get a remake someday, and only you can make it better. Hey guys, this is John Bokenkamp, the creator of The Blacklist. You are listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Okay, now we've got Special Agent Intel. This one is more of a fun find than, than Intel. This is from Richard Kaleric. Aaron and Troy, my wife found out that two of Vladimir Putin's daughters are named Maria, nicknamed Masha, and Katerina. Putin was in the KGB. Coincidences? Hmm. Um, here's what I think about that. I do not wish to be targeted, so I do not have an opinion. I'm glad he's a dad of two daughters. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have and, fun. And I have nothing nice to say about Vladimir Putin. So I, I coincidence uh, in terms of writing it into the story. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it would maybe make sense. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense to have a tie in there. Everything is pulled from something, right? Absolutely. Uh, if you are still one of the people that are on the red is not Katarina fan base. This one's for you. 
Robert Preston said, maybe Katarina is behind both the Cooper blackmail and trying to take down Red. It would be her revenge on Red specifically and the task force for not protecting Liz, Masha. Um, can I speak to that real quick? Absolutely. Uh, revenge on Red and the task force for not protecting her daughter. The person behind this literally led Van Dyke to kill Liz. Right. So that wouldn't make any sense. Just, I'm just, I'm just saying out loud. Also because Red is Katarina. <laughs> yes, I would, I would agree with that. Notice we haven't even heard the name Katarina this entire season. Correct. Because Liz isn't there. Because in the show's mind, they ha- they dealt with this. They moved on. I'm telling you, go p- go rewatch this season's episode. They have moved on from this. They do not want to go back to who is Red because they feel like we answered it as much as we're ever going to. This show has moved forward. But you you enjoy it any way you want to. It's not being stuck on a theory or anything like that. I'm telling you, the show dealt with it. They just I feel like they just dealt with it. But that's yeah. personal. Wrestler would still be investigating it because Wrestler was the one that was in on it with Liz. Mm-hmm. We we get any new information, I'll be more than happy to talk about it. But it's been 15 episodes and we haven't yet. I think that I, I much gotta say, the deal. If, if we get to 22, I don't even want to hear about it anymore. Because <laughs> honestly, it's done. We moved on. This is a different show. The show has moved on. They're never gonna come out and just take out a billboard and say, "Here's how it worked out," and here's a flow chart. You know, they they. Answered this like they were going to. But anyway, next they, next one. They did saying. take out a billboard and a flow chart in that montage when she died. It's true. That is true. Uh, oh, we got something else. Um, Paul Gokas? Gokas? I've heard it both ways. Thank you. Maybe the plot against Red is an organization like the Cabal, and they were behind Rakitin. I hope it is a new and powerful one that brings new people to the show and a new deep story from the past. With mysteries and escalation, etc. We want ominous, dark, mysterious red back. It's all good with the character development, but we are down in action and conflict. I agree with I agree with that. I would like another kind of seedy organization or nefarious mastermind behind all of this. That would actually be kind of cool if at the end we meet he finds out who it is and it's someone from from his past or someone we don't know about. Maybe maybe Kirk comes back. I don't know. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. I mean Although- I think Kirk and Red left on pretty good terms because Red let him live and he walked away. Oh, would you call that good terms? Really? I mean, I'm, let him live, but also learned quite a secret. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of, kind of let him suffer in anguish for many, many years before that secret was revealed. So maybe when it's all dumb, we'll find that it's old man Marley. It's kind of weird. We haven't heard too. If it wasn't for that task force and their scrappy dog. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. We haven't had, well, I'm just, <laughs> Would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Uh, it's kind of weird we haven't heard Kirk's name, really, in years. I know. Isn't it? I felt like that was a character we would have came back to. I would think so, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but going back to the previous point, I, I don't think it's anyone who is a fan of Liz because they literally led Van Dyke to kill her. So doesn't necessarily have to be a fan of Liz. They just knew that Liz was the kryptonite. Therefore, they used the kryptonite to get to Red. Yeah, and maybe they thought this will lead them, this will lead to Red versus this will get Liz killed. You know, right. maybe they, that was an unfortunate coincidence or something. That could be the case. That's it, man. We're that's done. It. We're, we're out of here. Things are starting to heat up with the Blacklist, and that's going to conclude this discussion. So now is the time to recommend the Blacklist to your friend, your enemy, your neighbor. And when you do, please also recommend they listen and subscribe to the Blacklist Exposed podcast, where all the case files can be found at theblacklistexposed.com and everywhere great podcasts can be found. For more great Aaron and Troy hijinks, follow us on your favorite social media outlet. I'm at Troy Heinrich. He's at Aaron Smirks. And together we are at the Blacklist GSM. You can also follow the Facebook group and converse over there as well. About like 20,000 people in there. It's crazy. A lot of people. Crazy. A lot of people. Big thanks for listening. Don't forget to answer our profiling question. Who is your prime suspect in the Cooper frame up? Who do you think it is? We're not doing the owl thing again. We've done that once before. No, you're right. All right. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> Just so you know, Troy is out of touch and you guys are out of time. Bye. 
Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie right. We are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at 5 Popcorn. Be sure to subscribe, download the app, submit your feedback, but most importantly, keep yourself off of The The Blacklist. The Blacklist Exposed is a Golden Spiral Media production. Find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts.